Well, I've spent an awfully long time trying to rescue that little coil by trying to find the end of it and the missing end. And I did very briefly get it to work, but then the wire broke again and I can't find the end anymore. So, back to the little witch. I've put some hot glue in there to stop me accidentally pulling the wires too hard and damaging the rest of the wiring in there. If I just connect her up to a one and a half volt battery, she works absolutely fine. So, if we can find what I did with the carbon or graphite, that one I think would be the positive. And then I think this bit of casing from the battery might be zinc or certainly a zinc alloy of some sort. So we'll put that on the negative. And then we need something with an electrolyte in it. And I just happen to have a rather ropey looking tomato here. So I'm going to stick that in there. And see if we get anything. And the answer appears to be no. Oh, I'll take that back. She's giving just the slightest little shake, isn't she? If we turn her around a bit so you can see, a little bit more obvious. I don't know if you can see that or not. So we're obviously getting some current out of there, or voltage. I would think we'd be lucky if we got one volt. Let's go straight across. Can we see that? Can't quite see. Get about 0 0.6 of a volt. Builds up to 0 0.6. She gives a little kick as she draws the current away. So about half a volt, roughly. From a tomato. I've no idea how I'm going to edit this all together because we shot off at such a different direction trying to fix the circuit in that one. I spent probably a couple of hours playing around with that. So our little witch there is running off a tomato with carbon and probably zinc. Um, that'd be the anode and that'd be the cathode, wouldn't it? I suppose I could just switch those around just in case I've got it wrong. So we should be feeding it in the wrong way round and she's not moving. Okay. And then the other thing we could do just for the sake of completeness. <laughs> Go back to what it was originally.
So we're getting more power out of that little solar panel than we were out of the tomato. I think I might do a little series now, just trying, let's move that light around a bit, just trying some different uh, fruit and veg. So take her off there again, put her back on the tomato. Just measured that and that's about half a volt, 0 0.6 of a volt. That'll do. Spent far too long on this one. Things have moved on a little bit since the last bit of video. Um, we established we had a little bit of movement with the tomato. We've now got the zinc and carbon sitting in some milk. Now, there is the very tiniest little bit of movement there. I was just wondering what would happen if I left the milk to go off. Because then there'll be some different chemicals at work in there. And it might make a difference. So I just thought we'd do that. And in the meantime, while I've been doing that, you'll notice this fella is moving slightly. Not very much, but he is clearly moving. And what I've done, if I just pick him off, I dug into the middle of the coil, if you remember, earlier I'd actually broken off the center wire so I dug into it with a knife blade, sharp scalpel knife blade and just pulled out a loop so I had enough to solder another piece of wire onto so it won't be the absolute center end of the coil it'll just be somewhere roughly in the middle. I measured the resistance and it's about 470 ohms, so it's, I think these are 500 ohms when I measured them. So that's connected back up again, and we are getting, as you saw, some magnetic field. bit sort of stop and go because we're only using um, I think these are CFLs they might be LEDs I can't remember but I think they're CFLs so they're not giving you the proper sunlight anyway but it is enough to get that one going and my other little solar rockers are quite happy with that amount of light so that gives you a comparison that one's perfectly happy. This one, well, he recognises he's got some power going through him. I'm not even sure that I've got the coil connected up in the right direction. In fact, I suppose I could flip it over and see if that made a difference. All right, I've turned the coil over the other way. Mm, it looked like it was better the first way. I just try and align him a bit off to one side. Well, he's happier if he's slightly misaligned, according to me.
Hmm. Obviously, it's nothing like perfect, but it is demonstrating that I, I have managed to make a contact or a solder joint on that fine wire right in the middle of the coil. Yeah, okay. So uh, we'll see what happens if the milk goes off, see if that makes any difference to her. She is just giving that tiny little bit of movement. Don't know if you'll be able to even notice it. I measured it and there's about half a volt on there. Still that'll do. I'm quite pleased that I managed to get him at least moving, even though it's nothing like he should be. Just misalign him a little bit further. Yep, that'll do. Uh, you've got a better view than I have. Just looking through the camera on macro mode. I can't see that with my glasses. You can see the solder joint in the middle there. Thanks for watching. If you like that, then you might like this. And if you like this and that, you might like to subscribe over there.